Photons. Electromagnetic waves. No matter how light may behave, one thing is for certain. Light is the fastest moving thing in existence. It sets a cosmic speed limit for every other particle or information carrying entity in the universe. This revelation has led to the development of special relativity to help humanity understand and explain how objects moving close to light speed behave. However, an interesting thought experiment places one in the point of view of one of these photons of light and imagines how the universe may appear. But before I get onto that, I want to quickly discuss the postulates and important results of special relativity to hopefully convey exactly where this thought experiment arises from. Although it's thought that light speed is the fastest and nothing other than light can reach such a speed, one may naively think that by adding more kinetic energy to an object it would eventually reach and surpass it. I'm sure many, if not all of you, are familiar with the equation kinetic energy is equal to a half mass times velocity or speed squared. Therefore you might think that given enough energy or a small enough mass, the velocity of an object could increase so much that it equals c, the speed of light, or can be greater than it. This is where we require special relativity to tackle such problem, as the formula showing on screen now for kinetic energy is completely wrong, at least in this relativistic regime. You see, that equation holds only for low, non-relativistic speeds and is merely an approximation of the true kinetic energy of an object. When things become relativistic, i.e. moving at speeds close to light speed, things get bizarre. The nature of physics itself changes as what's known as a Lorentz factor becomes greater than unity. The Lorentz factor is defined mathematically here and is a factor by which certain things change as velocity approaches c. Note that at low speeds, ones less than a few hundredths of c, gamma is equal to 1 to a high degree of decimal places. If you don't believe me, try it yourself with a calculator. Sub in 300 million meters per second or 3 times 10 to the 8 for c, the speed of light, and then any realistic speed for v. For example, people typically walk at a couple meters per second, cars can travel at tens of meters per second, and even things such as bullets and sound travel at hundreds of meters per second. Subbing in any of those everyday values of speed will leave you with gamma equals 1, since the speed of light is so incomprehensibly faster than it that gamma barely changes. Light is so fast that it takes seconds for it to reach the moon from Earth and only minutes to reach the sun. However, if you were to substitute in a speed for v which was slightly lower than c, one of a similar magnitude, you'd see that gamma increases noticeably from 1. And if you tried subbing in c for v, you'd get an error on your calculator, as it's trying to divide 1 by 0. This equation for gamma implies that as speeds approach the speed of light, the Lorentz factor approaches infinity. And similarly, the factor for light must be infinite. Awesome, that's all very neat, but what does this actually mean physically? Well, you might recall that earlier, I mentioned that this factor affects how certain physical quantities are affected at relativistic speeds. By that I mean the equations of motion change depending on the gamma factor, and what you're used to in normal speeds and kinematics is just an approximation. As an example, here is how lengths and times change when depending on gamma. You can see that at high gamma, lengths get shortened compared to in the rest frame, and times seem longer. This gives rise to length contraction and time dilation. Essentially, for things that move at relativistic speeds, lengths appear shorter and time takes longer to pass than for a stationary observer. While confounding and hard to believe at first, I can assure you that these phenomenon have been observed and verified through use of atomic clocks passing at different rates based on their speeds and such. And while I could go on for literal ever about all of the cool consequences of time dilation and length contraction, such as the twins paradox, there's one not often spoken about consequence, which is the heart of this video. Just quickly though, the gamma factor also changes our equations for energy, momentum, etc. Here is how kinetic energy is affected by gamma, and so you can see that you would need an infinite amount of energy for an object of finite mass to ever reach light speed. But put simply, special relativity and the Lorentz factor is the universe saying no, you can't ever reach the speed of light unless you happen to be light, at which you must move at light speed. Now on to focusing what this means for light itself. As I already mentioned, light must have a gamma factor of infinity, which means that lengths are contracted so much that they essentially become zero. Let that sink in for a moment. Light cannot experience length as it moves at sea. Furthermore, time gets dilated so much that the concept of time to a photon means nothing. Time never passes for that. You may be thinking that this seems unphysical now. How can a photon move if it doesn't experience time? Surely movement is just an object's position changing with time. Well, to a photon of light which doesn't know what length is either, it wouldn't understand. Not just because photons aren't conscious, we think, but because, to it, it doesn't move and so it doesn't need time. Yes, to a photon it arrives at places instantly. Earlier I mentioned that to us it takes a photon a few minutes to travel from the surface of the sun to reach us on Earth. But as we now know, that's relative. The photon in its frame would reach Earth instantly, and that doesn't violate the finite speed of light 
as in its rest frame, that distance between the Sun and Earth is exactly zero meters, due to the effects of the Lorentz factor and length contraction. So photons don't experience time or length, and so are able to move between where they were emitted and where they eventually are absorbed instantly, and no physical laws are broken as all lengths are zero meters long, and so don't need any time to travel across. Pretty mind-boggling stuff, but this is indeed a truth about the universe. Referring to the title of this video now, if you imagine looking through the hypothetical eyes of a photon of light, you would just see the universe as a two-dimensional plane, a snapshot of what's in front of you if you will. As to a photon, depth or length in the direction it's travelling doesn't exist, or is equal to zero, and time doesn't exist either. All they can see is a still unchanging planar surface in front of them. If you can get over not experienced time or length in the direction of motion, then this result becomes apparent. Special relativity is much more complicated than I may have made it seem, so I appreciate anyone who is still struggling to come to terms with what I've said in this video, but to me is nonetheless an interesting thought experiment. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Only a small amount of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. It's free, it helps on my channel a bunch and you can always unsubscribe. So with all that said and done, I thank you for watching.